Yeah, there's dramatics. I'm openly admitting it. It's like Shark Week, but only with turtles. I've never heard of a female junior in my life, yet Lynette claims that her own biological daughter is a junior. And you know what else she is? She's a rug addict who's been on the property in Otter Creek. Keep in mind, Lynette told Judge Craig to Thomasis, there's never been a rug dealer, a rug addict, nobody with rugs on her property. Well, this is my current list right here. And I can't take full credit for it. It's because George put it together. Names of rug addicts on her property so far. Number one, John Crook. Number two, we've had Kenny Jr. Glidewell or Kenny Glidewell Jr. That's normal. He's a junior from Kenny Glidewell Sr. It's really odd hearing it from a female thing. Maybe it's cultural. You know, she claims she's Asian, she's black, she's Eskimo, she's Indian, she's everything. So it could be cultural for her. Uh, number three, Chad Van Campen. Number four, Andrew Campbell. Number five, um, that would be Junior, Michelle Preston. We'll get to that. Number six, Jess Munford. Number seven, Jim Culbertstone. And number eight, Jamie Johnson. That's eight so far. Now, we've saved Junior for last, even though in our list, it's based on a timeline of when they were on the property. So let's dig into Junior just a little bit more here. George and I actually met Junior, believe it or not. We were on the property, I don't even know. Lynette probably texts for something, as she normally did, and 99% of the times we ignored it, but this time we stopped by, and Junior was in the shed. And Lynette Sr. was very, very clear with us that her daughter is a rug addict, and she's in the shed detoxing. Now, I have no idea why you would put somebody in a shed to detox. I don't even understand why there's a four-year-old in a shed when it's illegal in the state of Florida, and why Florida hasn't jumped in to save this child. I don't get that either. But I do know I have seen this person, Junior, with my own eyes. And so has George. And through the lips of Lynette, who doesn't lie. I don't do that. I don't lie. As she stated in court, and she stated under oath in her deposition, there has never, ever been a rug addict on the property. Ever. Ever. And what's even more concerning as these individuals are staying in a shed there's gray water being dumped on the ground and urine is being captured in a gain bottle and then being dumped on the ground. And yet this is the same individual that's claiming she has a baby, which is a toddler at the age of four, with a life-threatening, yet we have nasty, dirty gray water. I hope you understand what gray water is. Gray water is your shower water, your washing your dishes water, your, your any water that doesn't have urine or fecal matter in it. Urine and fecal matter, that's called black water, okay? And it doesn't matter whether it's black water or gray water, it's illegal to dump it here in Florida. State law. And yet, their washer and dryer is dumping it. They've got a shower and an outdoor bathroom that she calls her beautiful outdoor bathroom, which then, when being called out on it, the legalities of it, she calls it the area to scrub the tortoises and the turtles. Um, even though we've already shown a text that says there was a bathroom five feet away from the shed. And you've got the bucket and everything being dumped on the property. So when George and I get on the property, it reeks. It smells horrific. Okay, so number one, you've got all this nastiness being dumped all over the property, including the urine, okay? Number two, they have rotten food from Winn-Dixie that they're getting illegally. It's all over the property. The whole property stinks. They've got animals that are being neglected, not cared for. All their fecal matter isn't being cleaned up to the point that even some of the animals are killing some of the other animals, which is pretty horrific to think about it. And so we get on the property in complete and total horrific smell, horrific sights. It is one of the most insane things we've ever seen. And then we have to hear this whole story about Michelle Preston, the biological daughter. Lynette Preston has had a lot of daughters, okay? So you have to understand, seven men were dumb enough 
or completely and totally manipulated into marrying this woman. And then they got smart enough to actually divorce her, including Crook. Now, I realize Crook did it for financial reasons because he was losing benefits. We all know that. But still, who in their right mind would stay married to this woman? As a matter of fact, her daughter, Junior here, says it best. And I know you can't read it on the screen here, which is why I just show it to you to say, hey, here's the receipts. You remember the old Wendy's commercial, where's the beef? Where's the receipts? Well, we got the receipts for the world right here. And the court will have every single one as well. And don't worry, anything we're showing you is going to be supplied or already has been supplied to Lynette and her attorney, Silverman. It's called a right of discovery. There is no harm, no damage we're doing in regards to sharing all this. They're going to have it all anyway. And what's her response going to be? Lynette's going to go, I don't lie. I don't do that. I don't lie. No, wait till you see her deposition. Count the amount of lies. Well, Junior here says this, and she says it best. She says, so if you are friends with Lynette Preston, she said this December 7th, 2022, and this was after she was on the property detoxing, which by the way, December 7th, 2022, we didn't share any of this with you yet. But now that she's compulsively lying in court, we're going to share it all because she is getting perjury charges. There's no doubt whatsoever. And it's very, very serious perjury charges and defamation. And the list is going to go on and on. So Michelle Preston Jr. says, if you are friends with Lynette Preston on Facebook and me as well, please delete me. This is what she's saying. If you're friends with her mom, she doesn't want anything to do with you. Do you understand? This is her biological daughter. This is of her own loins, as gross as that mental picture is, as I said it. This is her daughter that's saying, if you are friends with my mom, I want absolutely nothing to do with you. Uh, why would she? Lynette is the same woman that's going out and saying, after 35 years, God finally blessed me with a daughter. Uh, Lynette has had stepdaughter after stepdaughter after stepdaughter, which are witnesses against her in court. Biological daughter. You never know, Junior may be in court as well. And then she goes on to say, that's my mother, and she is toxic and abusive. This is her own biological daughter. So any of you out there that are going, oh man, I need to stand up for Lynette. <laughs> I need to support Lynette. Her own daughter who knows her, who lived life with her, is telling you she is toxic. She is an abuser. Any of you out there that have never met her and you're sending $7,000 or you're sending $10, how foolish of you. You are enabling a toxic abuser to continue to go on and abuse another child. All right, let's see what else she has to say. She told me, oh my goodness, she, this, this is 100% Lynette. She told me she hates me. Right there. A mother tells her own biological daughter. This We're not talking about stepdaughters now. We're talking about biological daughter. The one thing you would think a father and a mother would have above anything else is a loving protection of their children. And yet Lynette says, she told me she hates me. She wishes she never had me. This is, this is horrific. Absolutely horrific. And how long is it going to be until this four-year-old is told the same thing? We already know because we shared another text, and you can go back through the whole Otter Creek playlist on the channel, that the three-year-old then said that she hates Lynette. You don't learn I hate you out of the blue. It comes from somewhere. And according to Lynette, she can't be around anybody. So the only person that that child could have learned that from is Lynette. Because she doesn't trust her around Crook either. Oh, that's right. Unless we're in court for hours upon hours upon hours upon hours upon hours on end, then she's locked up in a vehicle. So she only could have learned the words, I hate you, from two people. 
Lynette and Crook. If you take Lynette's word for it, that she can't be around anybody because she has a life-threatening disease. All right, and then Junior goes on to say that I am her only failure in life. I'm done being abused by her. After 42 years of her terrorizing my life, I don't deserve to go through this anymore. I was on the news as a kid multiple times because of the child abuse she put me through. And I can't live through it anymore. I won't tolerate her or any more abuse in my life. Period, is what she goes on to say. Now, for anybody who says, man, Jeremy and George... They've probably made this all up. They're stirring everything up in Otter Creek. No, everything in Otter Creek was already in Otter Creek, in Town Hall. The only thing I ever did was turn a camera on. The only thing George ever did was turn a camera on. And if for anybody who says, oh my goodness, this shouldn't be shared. We're trying to literally save a child. You have a 42-year-old, which is now going to be 44-year-old, say that she's been on the news multiple times because of this. I want those news clips. So Junior, please get those news clips. And I know your sisters are watching as well. Get those news clips to me. I need them. I want them. This is a life pattern of a narcissistic, toxic individual who is filled with nothing but hate and horrific abuse of children. This isn't something that just started. This is something that you're finally seeing. December 7th, 11.13 a.m. This is going to turn your stomach. From Michelle Preston. That is Lynette. Lynette Sr. right here. And this is what she has to say. Well, my daughter is gone. I left her in Chiefland. She jumped out of my truck. Never doing that again. I'm at a loss for words at what she did yesterday to push me to a new breaking point. I could use prayers as my heart is broken. I'm alone. I have no life. Nothing. I want my home, but not John. Hold a second. Is this post about her daughter or is it about John? Apparently, it's about her daughter and John. Honestly, we cannot finish our house. Well, I think the world has figured that out, that it's not a house and it never will be a house. Okay, let's go on. We have no money. We can do... S what does this have to do with... Let's go back. It starts. Good morning. Good morning. Well, my daughter is gone. And now we're into... I can't finish my house. What crude, horrific mother starts a conversation about her daughter and then it goes into... I can't finish my beautiful house. I have no money. Okay. What mother... Seriously, seriously, moms right now, moms, I know you're watching, moms, would you ever, no matter what your child has done, abandon your child and leave your child. That's not motherly instinct. Motherly instinct, I don't care what my kids have done in their life. My kids could have done the most horrific things ever. I would still come alongside them and say, what you did is wrong, but I love you. And I will do whatever I can to help you. And what you did is not appropriate. And what you, the consequences of what you did, you are going to have to live out those consequences. But I love you. And I will always love you. And nothing you have ever done or could do would ever stop that love from a father. Now think about a mother. And this mother starts this entire thing with... My daughter is gone. I left her in Chiefland. I can't even fathom the lack of motherly skills, instinct, love. It's grotesque. And there is a four-year-old living with this. When she jumped out of my truck, never doing that again. I'm at a loss for words at what she did to me yesterday to push me to a breaking point. Well, it would appear that everything in life pushes this woman to a breaking point. 
The reality is she is her own breaking point. Every thing of chaos in her life comes from her, is created by her, developed by her. I've never seen any person with such issues. And boy, gee, aren't Joy and I, George and I, aren't we, aren't we lucky that they, we, they stalked us, George? Oh, we're lucky, aren't we? No, 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 we're not. And I sit there and I tell George, I'm like, I don't understand how we attract all these crazies. And George tries to tell me, believe it or not, this is what George says. She tries to tell me, she says, Jeremy, it's because you love too much and you accept everybody. You love them as they are, you accept them as they are, and they feel welcomed, and therefore the outcast go, okay, I belong, because Jeremy will let me belong. And these two outcasts, these two outcasts stalked us here for money. I, 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 it just blows my mind. And she says her heart is broken. I'm alone. I have no life. Nothing. That's odd because she left the most important thing of her life, in her life, in Chiefland. And I want my home, but not John. And here we are. This is December 7th. Here we are. This was 2022. Yes. Here we are in 2024. And guess who's still on the property? Crook. I want my life, not John. And who posts this kind of garbage on Facebook? This is insanity. Well, this was a text message to the local. Which I'm going to get to that next. Who posts this kind of garbage to a local? You, you have to be a very, very, very close friend to hear things like this. And this local was not a close friend. And many have said, well, Jeremy, all these text messages you're sharing, isn't that just going to be hearsay? Absolutely not. It's not hearsay. When the individual that received all the texts will be a witness on the stand saying, here's all the texts that I received. It is not hearsay. It's 100% witness. I, I can't believe this. Honestly, we can't finish our home. We have no money. We, we can do some here and there, but I'm trying to find programs or grants to help me. I wish I could buy him out, meaning crook. So, so many have said, how in the world did they get money? They had a condo. They sold the condo. They split the money 50-50 between themselves. And then they went in on this property 50-50. They bought the property, 1.66 acres, right across from our 70-plus acres for 20000 What was it, George? You probably know better 22, than I do. 22500 All right, $22,500. Literally, for a dump, 1.66 acres in Otter Creek. At the time we bought the 70 acres, acreage was roughly $2,500, maybe $3,000 per acre in Otter Creek. Now, it has gone up, but they drastically overpaid. Like, the people who sold it from them were like, give me the money, give me the money. I can't believe anybody would give us this much money. Drastically overpaid. Especially because since the property was a dumping ground for 10, 10 years. They took a gamble, and they risked it all thinking they were going to get money from us. That's what it amounts to. And they overpaid ridiculously. And I can't even fathom how somebody would do that in their life. So now I'm trying to get grants to help me. I wish I could buy him out. What does she need to buy him out? She's already posted, and she wanted $65,000 from me and George and from our fan base to buy him out, to remove him from the property. She wants sixty-five. dollars She's posted that. I've posted it on Facebook and on YouTube. I've shared that already. She literally put the number. Then give me, she said, put your money where your mouth is. Give me $65,000 so I can buy him out. Oh, my goodness. But I can't do that either. Life is not what I wanted. It's not what the child deserves. I'm giving up. And I'm letting God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, first of all, if she was ever giving up and, and letting God take control, she would never be in any of these situations in the first place. As a matter of fact, if she was giving up and letting God take control, she would have never abandoned her daughter in Chiefland. I mean, I think we can, we can all agree on that, right? We can all agree on that? My chap, my lips are chapped from all that's talking about Lynette. 
that or it might have been a cashew. Oh, I love cashews. So letting God take control now, and yet here we are two years later, there's still crook on the property who she calls an abuser, who she calls a rug dealer, and among many, many, many other things around this child. But somehow she was letting God take care of it. Okay. She said, someday maybe you and I could go do lunch or thrift shopping so I can get out of here a minute. If I didn't have, and she goes on to the child. If I didn't have the child, this is how crazy. This is, this is how crazy. She goes on talking about she never wants to see her daughter again. And then she ends it with she wants a job for me and George. If I didn't have the child, I'd ask Jeremy and George for a job. Senile through our here. Ugh. I don't even know what senile through our here means, but I know what ugh means. I hope everybody understands that we would never in a million, trillion, gazillion years ever hire this woman. If we ever did, or if we even let her volunteer, if we ever even let her volunteer, she would steal so much stuff. We would lose so much money. You know what we'd have to do? We'd just have to let it go and let God. And so we're extremely clear. We never trusted her or crook from the very beginning. They have never, ever set foot on one of our properties with our permission. Let's take a look at what Junior has to say about this. Michelle, the true Michelle. And I hope everybody understands at this point, Lynette has so many names. Lacey, Alexis... It goes on and on because it's all part of the con and it's all part of the scam. And now she utilizes her daughter's name and she hates the name Lacey. Hates the name Lacey because everybody knows what Lacey did. And everybody knows who Lacey is. And she's tried to hide it. And then she took her daughter's name with new scams in place. And her daughter says this. And I'm over two weeks sober. This is December 7th, 2022. After this whole incident, after she's out of the out of the vehicle and abandoned in Chiefland, she goes on to post, and I'm over two weeks sober. Now let's just stop right there. You understand how long she was on the property. She was a rug addict on the property. Yet again, another one. Eight total that we've shared with you so far. And we haven't even shared every single one with you. But we've told the story of eight so far, okay? Per Lynette's own words, not our words, not our story, per the story Lynette publicly posted all over the internet. And then Junior says, I'm over two weeks sober, so please keep that in mind. And she goes on to say, I'm not pushing anything on anyone. I could use a lot of love right now. I wonder why. She needs love because she's received none from her own mother. And I can't grasp this, how a mother cannot love a child despite the circumstances, despite the choices made. I, I get that pe people make bad choices. People make bad decisions. People do bad things. I, you've seen it in Otter Creek, and it's been going on in Otter Creek forever. It's just the camera's turned on now, and now the world is watching it. But that doesn't mean that Russ the Suss's mom would stop loving him. That doesn't mean that Don the Con's mom would stop loving him. That doesn't mean that Mary Mary Love is Scary, her mom would stop loving her. Or Rosemary's mom would stop loving her. I don't understand how a woman could be so vile, so toxic, so crude, so disheartened so not loving towards her own child. And then Junior goes on to say, I'm on my way home from Florida with absolutely nothing. Well, it's because Lynette kept it all. And then she goes on to say, I'm super embarrassed, but I don't even have a single change of clothes. I have no socks. I don't even have a coat. And she's headed back up to Iowa. And this is, this is probably one of the most sobering thoughts and sentences is here. She says, Iowa is my home. That's where my real family is. 
do, do, do you feel the gravity and the weight of that? When a biological daughter who is 42 at this point in time is with her biological mother and there is no love, none. And she says, my real family is back up in Iowa, which goes to prove family isn't always blood. Family can be extremely messy and extremely screwed up. But what I have found that there are some people I consider family that have no relation to me whatsoever. Family isn't always blood. And you see here with Junior, she clearly states family never was blood. Yeah, there's drug addicts. Linet goes on and on and on and on about Junior. And she says this, January 19th. Remember, we were just in December. Now we're over a month and a half later. January 19th, 11.41 a.m. to be exact. Because she says, exactly. And I'm doing the exact same thing. I cut my older daughter off. And that's why I'm not talking to her. She sat in our vehicle in Chiefland, talking to her daughter, telling her daughter why I was sitting right there. That I was holding her hostage. And I wouldn't let her leave. And that we had her living in a tool shed. A dirty, nasty tool shed. This is the same dirty, nasty tool shed that a four-year-old is living in right now. A dirty, nasty tool shed. So I told her if she didn't stop, I was going to throw her out. So she whipped open the door. Whoosh! Well, it seems to me like that was a threat. I'm curious if Junior went to go get an injunction on Mom. I whipped open the door while we were moving. I hope you are, you're getting this. While we were moving and she made me stop fast and she jumped out. The sad part is her daughter is just using her. Oh, whoa. 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 Holy cow. Pot calling the kettle black from somebody who's white who tells the world she's black. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, a a mother using a child, a child using a mother, Lynette using a four-year-old to get government money, a meal ticket, a paycheck without working, using, horrifically using exploiting. another person, exploiting for money. That's disgusting. The sad part is her daughter is just using her because her daughter thinks that she's going to get $65,000. My daughter ain't getting no money. Why 65000 That's the same amount to That's buy Crookout. same out. amount to buy Crookout. All right, so sixty five. Coincidence? So apparently they both pocketed after the sale of everything. They both, there, there was 130000 and they both pocketed $65,000. So her daughter was using Lynette. She's saying her daughter was using her, trying to get her $65,000. My daughter ain't getting no money because she's a rug addict. Rug addict. Oh, Craig Dodama says, that's a lie. I don't lie. I don't do that. There's never been a rug addict on my property. Or people staying on her property. Nobody who does rugs. Nobody who does rugs has ever been in my turd, dirty tool shed. All right, well, coming from our star witness in the case, Lynette. She's a rug addict. And there's sheet. It literally says sheet, like a bed sheet. And there's sheet things that is all this money that you can find on these treasury sites. She believes that all those names are her name and any people that have the name Michelle Preston, that's her money. She doesn't get that. She has to prove it's her money with social security numbers. Oh, that or Junior. Your mom stole your name in the next con. Maybe she took all your money. August 10th, 2023. As we've had enough of this and we understand the danger that the child is in and the danger that the town is in and the danger that the animals are in, Lynette has to go on one of her 
hate pages yet again where she says she wants to talk about butterflies and bunnies and bubbles and yet she's talking about more rug addicts and she says looks like i need to answer another one of jh's stupid videos the daughter that jh is talking about this is junior happens to be 42 years old pretty sure we already confirmed that this just happened several months ago. She came here for mommy's help. Okay, all right, now hold a second. I'm gonna need some clarification here. I'm gonna definitely need some clarification because Lynette calls a four-year-old mommy, which very well could be one of the creepiest things I've ever witnessed, okay? And the four-year-old seems to show more maturity as the true mommy uh, in the entire relationship dynamic on the property. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing the 42 year old came here for the child's help, mommy, right? Um, no, no, no. According to Lynette, now, now Lynette is the mommy here. So the 42 year old came here for mommy's help in her life and ended up, she was doing, what's that? Rugs, rugs. No, your honor. No, there's never been anybody who's doing rugs on my property. I don't lie. I don't lie. My mom died. My mom didn't die. Oh my goodness. This is insanity. I, 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 I can't even imagine. Craig, I know you're watching. And Craig, I know members of the Levy County Courthouse are watching. I can't even imagine what's going through your skull right now with your skullet. I really can't imagine. You, you stating that you have to take her lies as truth because that's the law. And yet the truth is right here over and over and over and over. Four hearings so far and have yet to be able to debunk any of the lies. Interesting. Not only that, we have a world-renowned, the nation's number one handwriting expert coming in and has already done the report and said, it absolutely 100% is Lynette who wrote these signs trying to destroy my life that literally states I was rapping her daughter. Do you understand that kind of connotation and allegation, how it can destroy somebody's life? And that's what she tried to do. When she doesn't get money, when she doesn't get her way, all of a sudden it becomes, you did this to children. You did this to females. You did. This is her life pattern. And you're going to see it in court. You're going to see her actual children testify to this in court. Okay, so let's let's keep going here. I, I get a little worked up. There's a lot of people in danger of these individuals right now. I get a little worked up. That Florida hasn't come in and done the right thing. That a judge isn't doing the right thing. That it, 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 I get a little worked up. All right. So she needed mommy's help in her life. She ended up, she was doing rugs. I took her, I got her on something to help her get off of them. We're never gotten along because my daughter has been an addict since she was 16. And here again, she tells the judge and under oath in her deposition, there's nobody ever been on her property on rugs. I would never throw a child out of the car. Um, I'm going to say that I'm going to agree to disagree. That's, that's where I'm going to go with that one. Um, now the text message to the resident of Otter Creek did not say she threw the child out of the car, the 42 year old. She said that she, it said that she was alleged being held hostage and she wanted out of the car and then Lynette pulled over and the door was whipped open and Lynette abandoned her daughter in Chiefland. So let's keep going. Um, we've never gotten along because she's an addict since she was 16. I would never throw a child out of the car. I would never harm any one of my children e ever. And the it that this man is saying, oh, keep in mind, she says she doesn't cuss either. Okay. So and here's the other thing. Okay. You have to realize, you have to realize, um, a cuss word is just that a word. Okay. Um, name calling. There are people that go, oh my goodness, you're calling Lynette. You're calling her a fool. What does the Bible say about a fool? All right. What did Jesus say about the Pharisees? 
I mean, called them whitewashed sepulchers. He called them, called them snakes. Called them. Do you realize Jesus was name calling? Call it the way it is. They're just words. Do you realize there's a justified anger? Jesus, who was without sin, justified anger, was name calling. He was flipping tables in the temple and chasing people out with whips. I've yet to get a whip. Maybe Jesus was the first original Florida cracker. Because there are individuals that want to state that the, the history of the Florida cracker was the whip cracking with cows. All right, well, long before there were cows in Florida, if you actually do your research, now I understand how you want to cover up the reality of cracker with cows or corn, but the reality is you can't erase the history of where the term came from. And Jesus was chasing people out with whips. All right? So understand there's justified anger and cuss words are just simply words. Do you understand one word in one culture has no connotation of a bad word in another culture? I could say a word right now. Uh, it would start with F and the rest of it would be uck. And in and overseas, that word literally means... I have another F. Air, we'll get to it. I know okay. where you're thinking. It means to aerate the ground. It means to pull plugs out of the ground and aerate the ground. Over here in the United States, it means something totally different. It's just a word. Fanny pack. As George is just saying, I got another one. We say fanny pack. All of our United Kingdom followers go, don't say that. That means women's front. And we go, great. It just means fanny pack here. A cuss word is culturally based. The culture says this is a bad word. You can't say it, okay? A word is a word. No matter what the connotation, a word is a word. So you can't say, well, Jeremy said that word, therefore he's not a Christian. But Jesus said, Jesus called donkeys, well, you already know what he called them. And in our culture, that's a bad word. And you go, well, Jesus isn't Jesus because he said that word. Uh, oh my goodness, come on. Well, here she is cussing as she states, well, I don't cuss, we don't cuss. Well, the residents of Otter Creek will disagree with it because they hear her and Crook yelling and screaming cuss words all the time, every day. All right, so... The, uh, <laughs> uh, that was that was a side note there. The it this man is saying it's getting thicker and thicker and thicker and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And for those of you that are absolutely eating this crap up, sounds like Michelle McCain, the underwear bandit, who posted um, what was that day ago that she wants to eat my donkey. And the judges. I understand that. We won't even go there. I understand that is standard in today's relationships That's and a world, different but, story um, for another time. Michelle McCain and I, we ain't like that. We ain't like that. We're completely not like that. Um, man, that woman, that's another, She's that's, a, that's another rug addict right there. Shocked she hasn't been living in that shed yet. It's ridiculous, all of you eating this crap up and believing it. What's wrong with you? No, oh, I don't know. Maybe they actually... They probably most people look at look at evidence, look at proof, not receipts. Most people look at evidence, look at proof, and they make a conclusion based on actual evidence and proof. That is why all of you out there believe truth. Okay. And she's asking, what's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Seriously, again, more lies trying to run me out of town. I've never tried to run anybody out of town. Anybody can live wherever they want to live. Now, as a resident of a town, you ought to live and you ought to, you ought to conduct yourself appropriately for all other residents of the town. You can't run anybody out of any town doing anything. But Lord knows that woman needs help. Help. And I ain't talking about on the property. That woman needs professional help that she will never, ever receive. And Crook needs professional help he will never, ever receive here in Otter Creek. It's not available. Okay, more lies. Trying to run me out of town to get everybody to hate me. It seems like Lynette hates her biological daughter, and her biological daughter hates Lynette. I'm not sure how I had anything to do about that. But long before we ever started filming any of this for accountability and for the news of our story, Lynette had already stated in text to the residents that everybody in Otter Creek hated her. So I'm not sure how I had any part to do with that when I never shared anything. I was in Hawaii, and I was in Vegas, and I was in, in Hale's headquarters, and this woman was stalking and watching every single video that we ever posted. Okay, 
But somehow, I'm at fault making everybody hate her. I, I'm not sure how I... I don't get that. I don't get that. Okay. Wreck my life. And for what? For telling George or whatever the H-E double hockey stick name is to get off my property? Which again, never, ever... Did I can't it happen? confirm it never happened, ever. In her mind, it may have happened, but it never happened in real life. Okay. Did not happen. Very interesting. Uh, to get off my property, because I wouldn't vote the way they wanted me to on all this garbage. How in the world are we supposed to know how anybody is ever going to vote? Votes are cast confidentially. Votes are cast secretly. How in the world is that? So what is it? So what is it? So she's posting two conflicting thoughts. We destroyed her life because she told George to get the blank off of her property, which is a lie. But now we destroyed her life because we, she wouldn't vote the way that we wanted her to vote on this garbage. How are we supposed to know? We literally did not want to hear from her or talk to her or have any communication or contact with her. So how are we supposed to know how anybody votes when voting is confidential? What is it? Is it the George issue? No. Is it voting? No. We wouldn't let her get money from us. That's the issue. And it goes on. All right. And, uh, and I tell you this right now. I'm so glad I'm not sitting on that board right now. And that's all I'm going to say about it. God bless. And everybody have a good day. On 9-24-2023, Lynette posts this, again, on one of her hate pages. Otter Creek, let's all hate the Hales. Um, because we exposed what her and John came to Otter Creek and tried to expose. Remember, they posted signs up in public areas where they should have never even had access to. And a giant sign in the front yard of a 501c3, which is illegal. All against... Russ the Sus, Stuart Stewart, uh, you got Attorney Worm. They, they are the ones that started filming all of Otter Creek. I hope, I hope everybody understands that. It was, it was Crook and Lynette who started filming all of Otter Creek. And then calling corruption and corruption and corruption. Then when I come and get involved, all of a sudden, they're on the other side. It's wrong of oh, you. Now, now it's wrong of me because I filmed it. <sighs> Go figure that one out. She says, 9-24-2023, we didn't move here until October 27th, 2021. Finally, we're getting some truth. As she told everybody, she had that property. She was here well before we were. All right, we didn't move here until 20, 20, blah, 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 October 27th, 2021. That's when I bought it from the sisters. And here now we have some truth. Because she had me illegally trespassing on the property with a tractor. Had me illegally trespassing on the property with my own body. Because she lied to me and told me she owned it. She did not. There was no ownership. I wasn't here until October 27, 2021. 20, That's when I bought it from the sisters. Sisters means it was, it was a group called the Three Sisters. The LLC. And it was out of New York, I believe. Something like that. But we had been watching it for two years prior to when we bought it. That liabilities is strong. So, so strong. So, 2021 to 20 to 2018, that's funny because she's been telling everybody that she was watching it since 2018, but two years prior would only go to 2019. So, what is the truth here? All right. Um, we, it was never up for sale. It was never up for sale. That's the truth. It was never, ever, ever up for sale when she says she was watching it. You can't watch something that you don't know is not for sale. Or that you don't know is going to come for sale. Or you don't... Well, I mean, what do you do? You just get on a map and you go, boop. Okay, I'm just going to watch this until it comes up for sale. Mm, or it's One day. In the winter, One so. day. All right. Okay. Uh, but I, I was watching it for two years prior. Again, keep in mind, it was not up for sale. There's no way she could have been watching it. It's a complete and total lie. And yeah, we got the receipts. Um, and I was going to move out on my ex-husband. I wanted my own place. I wanted to be up by my friend Carmen. And yet, we've seen all the text messages. I have no friends. I'm alone. I'm all alone. I'm, I'm bored. bored. Uh, okay. 
Maybe Carmen and Carlos have a thing together. I don't know. Could be. And I wanted to be by my other friends up north. My other friend was moving to North Carolina. Florida, Otter Creek, isn't anywhere near North Carolina. Nowhere near North Carolina. Last time I checked on a map. I should check really quick here. Let me check on Google Maps. And, oh, uh, yep, yep. Maybe we should nah, ask nah, Alexa. Nah. Well, I'm not going to ask Alexa. I, I've already I've already figured it out, mapped it out in my mind. Nowhere near North Carolina. And I wanted to be closer to her, but there was no reason for us to move things. We were going smooth. We were getting semi, semi getting along. But when COVID hit, it all changed. I had to move because of my baby. It's as simple as that. All right, let's be very, very clear. We've already sh shown all the receipts or the proof or the evidence. She moved because she isolated this child from her biological family. And she called the siblings of the child snot-nosed brats. That's the real Lynette. Okay? Complete and total isolation. Frankly, that's abuse. Uh, by the way, she also is part of a whole family alienation Facebook group that she created about family alienation. And then she took the child and then she abused through family alienation. Insanity. Insanity. All right. Uh, that changed. I had to move because of my baby. It's as simple as that. I, didn't, I did not follow him here because I didn't give a rat's. Batootie. Batootie, badootie. Something Michelle McCain wants to eat. Uh, a rat's something, yeah, she wants the underwear bandit wants to eat. About what he was going to do in, st and in stock him. I think it's supposed to say, I didn't stock him. And I've never asked him for money. That was a lie. But then he earned highlighted. This is extremely important. Extremely important. Uh, I was, I was going to do his meet and greet. For all of his fans and bring the tortoises. One conversation I asked, are donations allowed? He said no. So let's back up a little bit. She didn't want to pay to go to what the hails half mill time to grill. And so she begged her way in. Hey, if I bring a tortoise, can I get in for free? And I went, sure, that's fine. And then it was, I want to put up a donation box. Absolutely not. That is not appropriate well, The last at time all. I checked, that's money. <sighs> last time I checked, that's money as well. All right, and then it goes on. Well, I'm going to get great amount of publicity from them right here. Great amount of publicity, which is what she wanted when they moved here anyway. They wanted money, and they wanted publicity. They wanted our money, they wanted our fan base's money, and they wanted huge amounts of publicity, which they got. I mean, they got it. And now they're running to the courthouse for an injunction because they got publicity. Oh, and then... George came to my property and told me I should give my baby up for adoption. And that is exactly when I decided I was no longer going to do the meet and greet. And here is the message I sent him. So let's back up a little bit. February, George goes on the property because this woman constantly is nagging us saying, I've got bread for your chickens. She's trying to give something that she got for free from the children's table. And she's trying to give something so she can get something from us. And then she would constantly beg for stuff that we found in storage units. Which, by the way, where'd the idea come for her to do storage units in Otter Creek as well and to go thrift shopping? Watching our videos. Every idea came from mimicking us, trying to be us, and watch our videos. So, all of a sudden... In February, George is there because I tell her, I don't want to go talk to that woman again. She's exhausting. And I say, George is going to the post office. Can you just stop by and get this bread so this woman stops texting me? And George stops by and George is trying to get out of there. And she, Lynette's going on and on. I can't pay my bills and it's so stressful and I can't even, I can't buy food. This is how she begs for money. And George goes, well, you got a lot on your plate. Maybe you should remove some of it. And then it keeps going on. <laughs> well, it's me. Give me money. I can't. And George is like, hey, I got to go. I got to go. And it goes on. <laughs> and George says, listen, I really have to go. I'm sure some of you have been in that situation. You're just dying to get out of there. You're trying to get out of there. But the psychotic person won't let you out of there. And that's what happened in February. And then in March, when I tell her, no, absolutely not. It's inappropriate. Then she starts all this garbage with what the hails. And the garbage was already going on with the other residents in the town, with the signs, with town hall, with everything else. She starts all the garbage. 
And she never does get to the meet and greet. But she does get all the publicity she's ever wanted. As a matter of fact, we're going solid on over a week straight right now of nothing but Lynette on WTH, your number one news station. It's like Shark Week, but only with turtles.